Hey everybody, how you doing? It is about uh, six degrees out. As you can see in here, we're uh, pretty windy out here today. It's supposed to be cold all day. Just a miserable day. But one thing about it, this time of year, we're inside where it's warm. 65 in the shop here. So the oil furnace might run a little more than normal today while we're videoing, but that's all right. So we got the uh, rear axle in this housing yesterday. Now, I put this together the way International says. International says that you tighten it up until it has 10 to 20 inch pounds, which where it's used bearings, I went with the low side. I got it right at 10. Um, you know, if you put new races and stuff in, you'd probably want to hit 15. Try to head for the sweet spot. So, anyway, um, I've got it all tightened up caught a pin now if you go to the what is that thing an IT shop manual and read their description they say you just take up all the clearance and it still turns freely which be honest about it 10 inch pounds is turning freely so you know it's however you want to do it but I got mine to 10 inch pounds like I said in my international book um, I did go and run a die over this 5 16 18 thread on the jam bolt. And so, anyway, I'm going to slide this in. And this is why, before you put things together, you want to make sure that all this stuff is nice and free. Because I'll tell you, you can have a hell of a time with this stuff if you don't. Anyway, we've got a 5 16th square socket, which, you know, I know a lot of people that have looked at square sockets in a yard sale or something says, what in the heck do you ever want to buy them things for? But I'll tell you, if you ever get the chance to buy square sockets anywhere, pick them up. Don't matter if they set in your box for 20 years before you use them once, but when you use them that one time, you'll be glad you had them. So, that's up tight. Then we'll take up the jam nut. So, now we're ready to tackle the brake band. And uh, <clears throat> I'll bring it back here when we get ready to do something. Yeah, so I got ahead of myself a little bit here. Um, I should have had you over here. I'm driving these pins out. There's two of them. And they do drive out quite hard. But that frees up the band. And there's one of the pins, and there's the other pin. So, anyway, um, yeah, I guess I drove them out right because these serrations I meant to go in last, and the serrations are on this side here. So I would say they go in like so, from the big boss, which is the way I, I used it to stabilize it, actually. That's why I took it out that way. It appears that's the way they intended to go. So I'm going to wash this up. No sense to bore you with that and get it all cleaned up. And I'll get a new brake band. This one here, it's not wore out, but it's had oil on it. And, you know, you're in this far, you might as well put new ones on it. They're not much money. So I'll bring you back in a little bit. So when you go to put these pins back in, you'll notice if you drive them out this way with the serrations down, that when you go to put them back in, they'll go through on that area there. They will not go through this side. So they're definitely meant to go in from this direction. Which, of course, complicates it because 
I gotta look things over here when I took it out. Yeah, I don't know if it makes any difference or not which way this thing goes. There is a difference on the distance right here to here and here to here. There wasn't on the old ones. The old ones were identical. They were just bent a little bit different. Which it looks to me like this side might be a little further up than the other side, but I'm not sure. It's just the way it looks. So I'm going to put it the way it looks like it should go. Then flip it over and we'll put a pin down through. Start out with a small hammer. going to move all right I had to grind these edges these are just a little fat when they on these reproduction ones so yeah I've heard people say that these are a son of a gun to put on I can see that they could be I bet it's really going to be fun when we go to put it on the tractor itself you know don't know if I can catch that in the vise or not. Make it a lot easier if I can. So sure, look at that. Beautiful. Run that up a little bit. They need to go right flush. Beautiful. They're both flush. That's going to be like that on the tractor. Everything seems to work all right. So, time to go see about putting that in the tractor. Well, I got this all put together, but I think I'm going to have to drive it back apart. Um, that isn't within. Well, you know the old saying, ain't within a row of assholes. Um... And the one that tends naturally to be long or, or bent a little more that way, it's, it's I got it on the right direction, but I don't believe I'll ever get that band on there. Um, so I took a file right along this edge to see if it would help it go in. Um, I don't know if it will or not. But huh. oh, it almost wants ow, them sons of bitches are shot. I'm gonna just uh put a little bit of a bevel right up close to the top. I'll be right back. Okay, I think I found the problem right here on the top. find the old ones here. What'd I do with the old one? Jeez, draw, I set it down. Up right here. Thought I liked it over there. So if you look at the top of this one, you'll notice right here there's a bend. This one here came off straight like on this side. And I just put a bend in it and now I can push it on with my fingers. So apparently you just got to like everything, you've got to massage it a little bit. But that's not bad. That's pretty light. I mean, 
Yeah, I can turn it by hand now. So we're all good. Now, oh shoot, I was gonna show it. There's a button in here. Um, yeah, it comes on and off easy now. Make sure that you put this button back. That button just sets in that brass bushed hole. And after you've, you know, bent this, I set it on the anvil, uh, not anvil, but the uh, vise, and just hit right there with a punch twice. And it smartened it right up, made all the difference in the world. So, I was about ready to give up on it. And I kept thinking, boy, there's gotta be a way. So, yeah, now it's stuck on me. It went in easier than this before. There we go. So, yeah, so that's all there is to it. And of course this right here will go into your actual transmission housing. Um, I'm gonna put just a touch of Nevisees in the housing. Not that it amounts to anything because it all dries up in a while, but a little graphite in there is better than nothing. I'm gonna hang these on the wall. You know, someday I might get a cub that is right metal to metal, and I don't want to put a lot of money into it. You know, this one, he has a nice machine, so we're kind of trying to do everything right on it as we go. And uh, this uh, brake liner still isn't quite in all the way. I know it'll go, though. There we go. She's working on it. There, you got to make sure that that pin is in flush. Or the, or the step on the pin is in flush with your flange. Once that's to that point, you know, that dinny should be ready to go. We'll uh, set you around here so you can see. Now well, I've got all my bolts cleaned, ready for the slide on. Get ahead of myself a little bit, I forgot the copper. I'm gonna put just a little bit of this uh, copper any sees here in where that pin goes. It can't hurt and it shouldn't get on the brakes because it'll dry out. That's one thing about never sees. If they put an oil in it that didn't dry out, which I know they make oils that don't dry out, but you know, this has just got a regular petroleum based oil in it like anything grease or anything it dries out eventually um, you'd think they'd put something synthetic in there that wouldn't evaporate but anyway probably would cost you a hundred dollars a bottle if they did so now we've got this unit all together and I'm going to take just a little bit of 90 weight out of a drain bucket. Put some on that oil seal right there. Don't even hurt to put just a little bit on the shaft. You don't want enough it's going to get onto your brakes or anything. Just a little bit will do you. We'll pick this up and see if we can't slide it on them two bolts. Now, see that brake drum being just as sticky as it is? Well, I can turn it, I guess. There she goes. So, once we get her in, we'll pull her in with these top bolts. And uh, well, we've got one side of this thing almost done. Hard part though, we've got to line up this little stud here. Um, that pin might be a problem. See here what we got for how much stuff has moved. Get my light on here real quick. Boy, that's got to go down just. Looks like maybe a 
sixteenth of an inch maybe. Not much. Pretty darn close to being where it wants to be. Don't know if a screwdriver will do the trick or not. Well, that felt promising. Look at that. That slid right in. Buttons right up. And I'll tell you, if you don't normally use these long bolts for lineup, you're missing the handy trick because it saves on the seals that you you know putting stuff in through. Um, it's just so much easier. And you're talking, you know. You go to some place like Tractor Supply and buy them by the pound. You're talking, you know, a dollar for a couple of bolts. They don't have to be grade eight. Um, so anyway, yeah. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's see now. We've got the two bottom bolts are shorter, so those have to go in by hand. And we've got one more top bolt, but I, I missed it and didn't get it clean. So I got to go wire wheel that, get the rust off of it. And uh, then we'll actually put the fender back on. This side will be about done. So anyway, we'll put these in and I'll be back in a little bit. Yeah, so anyway, we're... Uh, Everything's just kind of set loose here. I'm going to put my fender on so I can torque these bolts. Put that uh, front bolt nut on here first just to hold things. You don't want to tighten it though because you still want to be able to wiggle the back stuff. Get the other four of these bolts. Well, they're starting anyway. There we go. Stuff's coming together. Closing up up top. Yeah, she's too tight. So once you know the cast iron's up flush, you can start tightening. You always want to make sure that that two castings are made there. Because if there's something in the way and you start cranking down stuff, you'll break the casting. And as ashamed as I am to admit it, I've done it in the past when I was young. So I know that it can happen firsthand. And uh, yeah, so now I get a quick water and tighten that up. And uh, this will be all on except for the brake rod. And we got to do a little bit of work on that. So I'll bring you back in a minute. Well, if they didn't give a torque spec for these, normally I would just tighten them up, but they happened to give one, so. We was just about there. That one I was there. That one moved a little bit. Yeah, so they're about where you would normally stop with a 3 8 bolt anyway. Yeah, perfect. The two bottom ones, just got to wing it. Uh, you can't get a torque wrench onto them. So anyway, always make sure you back your torque wrenches off when you're done using them.
So anyway, we're uh, pretty well set on this old girl. I'm going to tighten up that front bolt off camera, and I'm just going to tighten them two bolts on the bottom off camera. Then we'll work on this brake line. I'll bring you back then. So as you can see, this is pretty nasty. I'm going to go wire wheel it, and uh, we'll see if we can't stuff get stuff moving here. And uh, both ends, because they've never been adjusted, I don't believe. And we'll straighten out the rod. The rod's got a heck of a bend to it. And I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, well, let's see. This one here. Oh, this might not be bad. That feels like it's going to loosen right out, maybe. Don't know. Well, maybe not. Another one here. We'll back the yoke off instead. There we go. Guess we're going to get lucky. I didn't think that would start that easy. Now we can get a hold of that nut better. Oh yeah. There. I know we're going to have plenty of travel now on that side. So I'm going to put this all back together. We'll go to the other side. Then i got to put this on the anvil and do a little massage and straighten it out. I don't know how it got bent up so bad on this side, right by the exhaust. I wouldn't think anything would have hit it, but you never know. These ro rods are softer than putty, so. Damn rod right there, pain in my butt. Tighten her up a little bit. Beautiful. Now well, let's see, I'll wipe up all this mess. Well, that was very easy. Now we'll go over to the small anvil over here. I still got my big one outside, so I haven't, uh, I got to get a hold of some heavy steel to make me a stand for it, which I haven't done yet, so I've got a lot better one out back, but I just haven't got it fixed yet. Now yeah, let's see. Uh, That looks pretty good, you know. I can live with that. We'll uh, see if we can't get her on. Well, we've got everything straightened out. Everything freed up. Got two new cotter pins. So we've got our new, our uh, reconditioned rod, so to speak. And it really makes no difference which way you put these through. Whichever way is handy for you. I want to cut a pin out here where I can work it a little better, manipulate it. 
So, let's see, I guess that one ought to be screwed out a little bit. Try to keep them equal. And I think that we want about a neutral, uh, it's kind of funny, International didn't see the need to uh, put right and left hand threads on there. brake rod so yeah now up here where you can rub by it and stuff always put your cotter pin on the inside so you don't catch on it tear your clothes and whatnot and I'm gonna drop that one in I'm not gonna bend any of these ends yet though because we may have to take a pat and readjust you never know so we'll leave the cotter pins that one is in, and this one's just going to be set in loose. Of course, you can't see the hole, but there we go. So that's loose right now, and no matter how you run this travel, it don't tighten it, because it's right-hand thread on both ends. be awful nice if they'd have done it like a tie rod, where left on one, right on the other. But anyway, it's, uh, it is what it is. That one is done. I'm going to put the tire on it now. I'll put the disc on. And then the wheel weight, and then the tire. But anyway, we'll uh, tackle that now. We'll adjust the brakes later. Well, we're to the hardest part of the whole operation here. I got a half inch rod, just mild steel half inch. We're going to take this hundred and some pound weight, which 20 years ago I used to pick them up like nothing. Now they seem a little heavier than they used to be. But anyway, we'll take this. I don't think that Chop saw is going to be in the way. A band saw, I should say. I got two different lengths here. One's a one of the short ones. Get them ready. So, we'll pick that right up. Slide that right on like so. And pretty sure I'm going right, just like that. Yeah, there's the nut sticking right out there, proud as can be. And when you're tightening these down, kind of tighten them down easy and rotate your, um, your hub here as you're going. And let that weight kind of keep centering itself. Because it's not quite in the middle. Yeah. Oh yeah, nothing to it. So I'm going to work these down slow as I rotate it. Just do it with a hand ratchet. And, uh, oops, that's not three quarters. Oh, let's see here, yeah, that's three quarters right there. You'll notice as you rotate, they keep loosening and whatnot.
Yeah, I think that's probably good. I think it's the center. Probably as good as it's going to ever be. And if you're wondering why we got everything set out so far, we uh, mainly cultivate four foot plastic mounts with this. So, that's why the rims are set out, the dishes and everything. There. Now all we need is a tire. It's not far enough to get the washer on, but I can get the nut on. There we go. Now we can put the lock washer on. Brake drags a little, but not much, so that's a good thing. Come on, go. Yeah, get her started now. I'll put the lock washer on though. So, get one on the bottom. Oh yeah. Now we'll see what happens. <coughs> Hit them real quick just to make sure. Hold the 
talk that this old girl will produce. One's tight. One's tight. Beautiful. And there is one side done except for adjusting the brakes. Boy, that is. That brakes do work good. So that's going to be an improvement. Yeah, I am so happy with that. All I got to do is bend over the cotter pins when I make sure both pedals are traveling the same. Like I say, I'm going to do that later. This other side is not going to be as handy. Um, you know, got a few more bolts along the edge, but not much. Um, I'm actually going to set this down. Put that tire right on the floor. Then I'm going to come on over and I'm going to jack over here on this pad. And I'll jack this up. And then I'll start working on this side. It'll be a lot more secure that way. So anyway, I hope that helped you guys. Anybody that's trying to do that rear seal. Um, 